Hey guys, what's going on? It's Derek with DIY Mug Biz, and welcome back to the channel. Lala and I have been receiving a lot of comments and getting a lot of feedback on our videos, so happy to hear from you guys here on the channel. Um, and a lot of the common ones are relating to kind of like space requirements and our setup and, you know, hearing things like, you know, well, that's great for somebody who's established, but if I'm wanting to start, you know, a, a mug business from home, from scratch, like with nothing, there's just no way that I can do it. I have to stick with, you know, print on demand, have somebody else do this because again, I just don't have the setup or the space or whatever. Okay, so that's kind of the, the uh, objection that we're hearing a lot. And I totally understand where it's coming from. So as I'm reading these and hearing these, I, I really wanted to do a video response to this just because I think you guys could very much resonate and benefit from my story going all the way back to 2013 once I, when I started doing this for the first time. It's going on a decade now, guys. So I have a little bit to say on the topic. This is before print on demand was even like hugely being pushed. There are a lot of more mug businesses, people doing it themselves like me. So like I said, I started back in 2013. I was doing it out of my parents' house, kind of just playing around with, you know, making mugs. I had a little Etsy shop and I would get, a, you know, an order here and there. I really didn't take it too serious. And then, you know, I would put my shop on vacation and then I would come back again. I was kind of all over the place. But then I moved out of my parents' house and I didn't have a lot of space there. Um, but then I moved into a one bedroom apartment down in the city. I was living in the country and I moved because I, you know, finished college and, you know, had to get a job and there wasn't any jobs in the country, right? So made the move to the city, one bedroom apartment. I think it was like 900 square feet, something like that. I did not have any space, but I took all of my mug business stuff with me to that apartment. That means my cases of mugs, you know, my, my inventory, my blanks, all of my packing materials, of course, my mug pressing machine you know, all my boxes from the post office, any blanks, all that type of stuff, right? So how did I make this work? I ended up staying at that apartment, just so you know, just for, you know, my own credibility for almost four years. So I operated and grew multiple mug businesses actually online out of that one bedroom apartment, doing it all myself before I met Lala and we got into this game together. So how did I kind of do that? How did I manage that? Well, you know, I was living a bit of a bachelor, so you know, I, I'll, I'll give you that caveat as a bit of an excuse. But other than that, guys, it's like making the most out of what you have and using the space that you have available to you. I just want to like get this out of the way. If you're worried about, you know, capital, upfront capital and having all this equipment and stuff. No, you can do all of this for less than a thousand dollars. OK, and if you haven't checked it out yet, go into the description of this video. We have our mug biz starter kit. That's what it is. It's a starter kit. Everything you need to get started. We show you, you know, we show you for free where you can get it and what you should get. So you don't mess around with getting the wrong stuff to put yourself in the best position. So check that down in the link. Everything I'm going to talk about, we talk about in that mug biz starter kit. So what did I do? So I took my kitchen table, you know, to kind of get started here. I had my printers and my laptop set up on my kitchen table. So I had a regular printer and I also had a sublimation printer because you do need both printers to do that. So uh, I had my printer set up on the kitchen table and I had my packing supplies. So I had some, you know, packing peanuts underneath the kitchen table. I had some bubble wrap laid out, you know, some crinkle to put inside the mugs. Um, and then anything else in terms of like my heat press tape, my scissors, I essentially created a little craft table if you can envision this. So I'm sure all of you guys watching this, guys and gals, have something that you could use as a craft table. Yes, I still ate dinner on this kitchen table. I would put a little plastic covering over it to make sure, you know, while I was working on it, doing my mug business, that it didn't, you know, break the table or scratch the table. If you have a nice table you want to protect, I recommend you do something like that. It's just kind of, you got to move it and then you got to move it again when you're done, you know? So there's a little bit of back and forth until you find yourself in the position where you can have a, a permanent office or a permanent little setup in a garage or a basement or something like that. But again, you know, this is a one bedroom apartment and this is how I did it. So I had that stuff set up on my kitchen table as my little packing area, my little, you know, craft table. So next, what did I do with my actual heat press, right? So if you haven't seen it, if you don't have one yet, they're kind of, I don't know if you can see my hands, it's about, yay big and you know yay tall high whatever you say and then off of the ground you know the height of it is probably like that so length width and height you know essentially it fits on a tv tray and the reason i say that is because that's exactly what i did it perfectly fit on a tv tray so what i would do is i would crack a window 
because it does have an odor when you're burning mugs. I would put the heat press on the TV tray, plug it in, move the whole thing set up, put it in front of my window so that there's ventilation right in front of it. And if I had to, I'd put a fan by it too sometimes. But that's all the space that that actual heat press and production takes up. That does not take up a lot of space. So if you're picturing some sort of conveyor belt assembly line type thing, you just need to educate yourself better, check out our videos, because this is not a big setup, okay? So, so far we've got a kitchen table and we've got a TV tray, right? So the other thing that makes, you know, takes up a lot of space is your inventory. So inventory, I mean your mug blanks, your sublimation blanks. Where are you gonna put them? Where are you going to store them, right? And on that note, I'll give you another little gold nugget here. How much inventory should you keep on hand? Well, obviously it's correlated with how busy you are. If you're getting started out, you can get away definitely with one or two cases. Each case typically has 36 mugs. We use the larger 15 ounce ones. We don't even mess with 11 ounce ones anyways. The 15 ounce one, everybody loves them. They're larger, there's just more value and you get to charge more. So we don't even you know mess with 11 ounces. But if you have one to two cases of the 15 ounce mugs, you can put those in your closet. That's what I did in my side closet. If I didn't want to have them out or I was having you know my parents over, I had you know a guest coming over, I would put them in my side you know coat closet, something with a door on it, right? You can stack them, you can slide them in. Usually we'll have things like kind of hanging down on the closet, but then you have those couple feet of space on the floor of the closet, even if it's a small little square, you can slide these cardboard cases in there you can stack them if you have to, you only need a few, and that takes up most of your inventory. If you wanna get rid of your packing peanuts or bubble wrap, you know you can put that in the closet too, but that's really all that you need to store. And, and worst case scenario, if you absolutely don't have that, you have nothing else, you can just slide it underneath your kitchen table, underneath your craft table. Now again, I know that's getting, yeah, that's really pushing it, you know, especially with the, the ladies watching this. Derek, there's no way I'm storing this stuff underneath my kitchen table. Okay, well then use your closet, something with a door on it that you can put those aside. You don't need a garage, you don't need a basement, you don't need an attic. Again, I did it in a one bedroom apartment for nearly four years. So guys, I don't want to make this a long video, but I just want to, you know, have a bit of a heart to heart with you today and let you know, hey, spatial requirements, and I also you know, touched on the capital, the money. Okay, you can do this for less than $1,000, and you can do this in a one-bedroom apartment. So I don't want those to be excuses anymore in your mind as to why you're stuck doing print-on-demand. You're stuck having to have somebody else fulfill these. There is a better way. That way is building a mug business yourself it's way more profitable. Again, check out our videos. We earn over $15 profit. I'm talking profit. That's after expenses and everything um, per mug that we ship, which means you also don't have to do and crank out as much volume. You don't have to run, you know, crazy ad spend to get these, you know, the traffic to your website or whatever. We also still use Etsy. You know, I know it's controversial and you know we definitely have our hymns and haws with etsy but you know what it's still been a great way to drive traffic to our our multiple shops that we have and if you want to go on and take that a step further and build a bit of an email list and own your traffic and stuff i highly highly recommend that you do that but you know getting started with a upfront storefront at like etsy um that takes no space you know very little capital right and then starting off with your actual setup with inventory and supplies in your limited space, like guys, you you absolutely can do this. And so it's like, I understand your hesitation. There's not a lot of people, there's not a lot of channels saying you can do this, but DIY mug bids where you're dedicated to teaching people just like you to build their own highly profitable online coffee mug businesses from scratch. And we give you the resources again, you know, in the description of this video, we've got the free DIY mug biz starter kit. And if you want to take things really serious, we actually have our ultimate DIY mug biz program for beginners. This is a paid program, but it shows you everything from scratch, start to finish, A to Z, that we did learn from our mistakes to really get this thing going off the ground as quickly as possible. And it all kind of fits into the, the foundation and structure that we we're touching on today with the space and capital expenditures. So guys, I hope today's video was helpful, maybe inspirational, maybe it gave you a bit more confidence that you really can do this if this is something that you're wanting to do. If in your gut you know you're kind of tired of the limits of print-on-demand, consider 
doing it yourself and consider even letting us be your teachers and your coaches if you're willing. So smash the like button if you got something from today's video. Consider subscribing to this channel because mugs are all that we do if you're looking for a community, an ecosystem that's focused on a mug business. Again, we haven't seen many YouTube channels, really if any YouTube channels, other channels, talk about mugs, but our whole channel is focused on doing a mug business. So if that's where you wanna be, this is where you wanna be, guys. So until the next video, thanks for watching. Take care, we will see you very soon.